All right, this is um, part two of the oil analysis. So I got my report back from the lab for the shop truck and their analysis was the viscosity is significantly high. Causes include contamination, oxidation, incorrectly identified viscosity grade. And that's the issue. This truck calls for five weight 20. And I think I mixed five weight 30 in there. Um, so that I was down half a quart and I threw some in there, but didn't put it in a report because had I put that in a report, they would have known um when i got the sample back they suspected it that's what it was and i went in there and updated it and said that i had contaminated it with um 5w30 same company same amazon signature series so adding a different viscosity grade to the component which is what i explained increase component where possible if grade is misidentified it could be updated in the horizon which horizon website which is what i did is the fluid viscos viscosity grade correctly identified? So they're going on and on with that. Cylinder, region, met metals, piston rings, liners, etc. are at a moderate level. Base number is significantly low. So they mean the base number of the oil. As base number depletes, the ability to neutralize adds, acids is diminished. Copper is, a, is at a moderate level. Possible bush and thrust metal. Replace oil filter and top off system with fresh makeup oil if not done when oil sample was taken. Resample in 3,500 miles or 65 hours. So again, 26,000 miles on the sample when I took it. Um, or 25,000 miles, I'm not sure. Might have been 24. I think that was the target, but I was on the road a lot. Um, but I did take a sample, you see, in the first video, and I sent that in. So they have a scale here from normal, abnormal to critical, zero to four, and mine came up in the three section because of the contamination of the viscosities. So they picked that up immediately. Um, when you get your report back, you'll see that they have it broken down as wear metals, contaminant metals, multi-source multi metals, additive metals, sample formation, contaminants, and fluid properties particulate count all of that's on the report um the report's gonna look a little something like this from the front not sure if the camera could pick it up and bar graphs in the back and what they will do they will color code what they detected so they give you a sample for iron and they'll give you the parameters which is good and they'll color code it or not good if it's significantly high or lower same thing with the copper and the lead and all these different metals will tell you different things uh different metals in the engine which they found like the boron is from the cylinder walls and stuff like that um not gonna get into it completely if you guys got questions send me an email um but again they recommend that I drive another 35,000 miles or run the engine oil, the engine for another 65 hours, resample, and await the uh, and then the uh, results. So instead of just changing oil for, just to change it, I'm still driving on that same oil that's uh, over 25,000 miles. So just keep my eye on the mileage at this point, and when I get the 65 hours or the 3,500 miles, I'll take another sample and send it in and await the results. So if you guys own fleets, more than one vehicle, um, engine oil changes are expensive in your vehicle. Why just change oil? Because a little dashboard thing comes on, which really doesn't know, it's an algorithm that uh, that's just in the computer. You can tell how long it was running, it tells you when to change oil. Change your oil, do an oil analysis, and get a complete detailed report on what's going on with your engine and fight things that are coming up. Get to them early. Keep your eye out for things that they say are high and go on the recommendation. There's nothing beats a lab, all right? The results are in. Keep on driving.